Hey guys, Frisbee here, how you doing? Okay, so this little beastie, I should tell you quickly, is based on another vehicle by Otto Van Zanten. I was looking for a non-flippable vehicle so that I could race it up against my, as you see in the underside of it there, it's got two uh, suspensions and a couple of controllers and a couple of discs. And it basically, the sensors on the outside of it detect the ground as it comes up and stops it from flipping over. Now, it turns out it, did, it wasn't very good for the race that I was planning, but I still thought you'd be interested in seeing it going as we head up to that because it's a cracking little vehicle and it, it drives like a dream. So, as you can see in the distance there, we have built a racetrack and the idea is we're going to race this human-powered vehicle against an AI vehicle, a uh, self-driving car that I've built, and um, we'll see how we get on. But first, of all, first off, we'll have a little look at my raceway in the desert here. Now I'll just pull up part of the beast. Oh yeah, what do you think of paint tool? Pretty cool, huh? Even if you just use it subtly like this. Now while I was rendering my last video on this subject, I, I put a note in, in the, the video saying that I had already developed another machine that was even faster on corners and could tear around the place. And um, that's exactly what happened. So I've developed that even further and then built this uh, racetrack in which I intend to race these two vehicles against each other. So just to explain, this is the original one that I, that I had recorded last week. Um, I just put up some boxes and then quickly flung this thing together. And as you can see, it copes with the bends a lot better than what the other ones did. And it will snake left and right through a chicane. And it gets up enough speed for uh, the smoke and grass effect to come off the wheels. There you go. So in so this one, I've got it running slow here. We'll speed that up in a minute. Um, in this one... You can see all the electronics and different nails is underneath and the whole body of the machine has been dropped down a good few blocks. I can drop it further than this. This is just the Mark II version. But for now, for raceways, I thought this would be good enough. Now I've put an elbow in that the the probe at the front there, that's the braking probe, that switches the fast engine off. I put an elbow joint in there because someone suggested if you did that, then it can retract itself as it comes up to the barrier if it's gonna crash. Uh, that didn't get demonstrated so much in this video, but I did test it out and it does work So I'm going to use it in future cars, but because this one never quite got fast enough to test it or it never tried to crash in that direction Then anyway, so what we'll do now is we'll jump up onto the tower here obs observation tower and I'll show you that car that I've just jumped out of uh, Doing like most of a circuit of my brand new racetrack. So I speeded this up to times two because uh, We've got a lot to get through and don't forget to like and subscribe guys, um, especially like this week because I'm trying to get this video boosted a little bit. Um, it worked the last time about a month ago when we did that for the bridge builder. So if you can help me out again, get this one boosted up, it'll get it off to a good start. Really appreciate it. Thanks guys. Oh. Okay, check this out. Watch. Number one engine comes on, then my number two engine kicks in. Does it really? Yes. That's what we want. And uh, it's got a bit more zoom zoom now, so we're back to normal speed filming. And the um, only downside is when it comes into the corners, it does manage them okay, but it overcompensates. And it overcompensates like crazy and eventually ends up flipping itself. But that was okay, that was the outer limits of what I can handle with those settings. Um, so all I had to do was find somewhere in between and we could go for a quick race. Now there's no way uh, I was going to lose against this thing because the other car is twice as fast. So the idea was to try and get as many laps in, is to, to try and lap it as many times as possible uh, and just see how we get on with that. But as you can see, this beastie's doing all right here on its own. It's got getting pretty much all the way around the track now, unaided. Right. So what I think we'll do here is we just dial it down a little bit. As you can see, it'll conveniently turn itself over for us. And uh, we'll just make a quick adjustment just so that it doesn't flip quite so badly on the corners and then we'll be good to start racing uh, and we'll see how that goes already here we go now like i said the the sensor system or the non-flippable non-flipping system in this car just didn't behave itself because when it's got um, barriers to either side it was picking them up no matter how much i tucked it in and it, it became unstable so i just pointed the sensors at the sky and went for it manually so here we go uh, we're working, as you can see, it's immediately a lot faster than the, than the self-driving one, as you would expect. It's early days. 
but um, even I'm having trouble controlling, controlling it, keeping it upright. Not the best of drivers. But it's a sweet little machine and um, it's good fun to drive around on this track with. It really is. And yeah, that's an H on that because there is going to be a helicopter on it at some point. Yeah, this track's going to get developed up. I think it's going to get extended and widened in, in some parts because it's too narrow um, for any kind of human sized machine. But it's, it's okay. The, the purpose is for this one. So, alright, we're just about happy with this fella here now. Um, I think I can just about hold it together for a couple of laps and we'll go toe to toe with the AI just as soon as we get around this bend. The first thing I thought of was a roll and start for the AI car because uh, I thought I would get it underway, make sure I was happy with it, then just jump out and run over to the little race car and then zip ahead of it and then set about the business of um, overtaking and over and lapping it a few times. But I just didn't set it up right. It wasn't properly thought out. And then I, cr <laughs> I crunched my way on the track like this and then promptly crashed and then the machine comes up behind me and it's just a mangled, twisted metal and... Uh, mess that one up. All right, no problem. Uh, plan number two was to get the both of the machines. Well, put my machine first of all at a safe distance and then get hold of the other machine, but this time leave it up on the lift. Uh-huh. Better idea. And uh, we'll just park it somewhere and switch on the engines so that when I get into my car, all I have to do is drop the lift somewhere and the second and the AI car will start. Make sense? Yeah. So like I say, all I have to do here is switch the engine on and then run away from it. There we go, and we're good to go. As soon as I drop the lift, that car will start, and I can zoom away in mines. Drop, run, grab, and go. And now we have a race. Yay! So, immediately, as soon as I start racing, um, I feel the pressure right away, and my skills just go to hell in a handcart. And I ride. You know what? I forgot about those sensors picking up that ceiling. I only just noticed that this time as you go through there. Right, I should just have switched the sensors off, that was dumb pointing them upwards because the tunnel sets it off a little bit as you go through. Not to worry. So there you go, we've done one lap and you can see that fella's just coming out of the tunnel. So we're looking good here, we'll zip around one more time, if we can do that, keep it on the road. Okay, and there it is. Now. Oh, you see the sensors picking it up again now. That's, I didn't even realise that until now, until I'm doing the commentary, that that's what was going on. What a bugger. All right, so what, what happened was we were doing two laps through its everyone, so we're roughly going at twice the speed. So there you go, we get two laps there when it's in, and we're coming up for the first opportunity to overtake them, and you come in and just clip wheels like Formula 1 still, yes. Notice the frames per second dropped as well. As soon as the two machines came up against each other, my computer says, uh, uh, they like this, and it dropped it. But apart from that, it was okay. It wasn't too bad. There we go. It sends us picking up shit again. The reason I know that I'm going at twice the speed of this machine is because I always end up catching it at this bend. It seems to be from that starting position anyway. It just hit it. Okay, so there you go. We, we overtook it there for the second time. And um, we've only got one more to go. And what I'm doing is because I'm doing two laps through its one, I'm cutting out the middle lap. So we're just seeing uh, the main part here as we come up to it. And we get around the corner, come up. We're looking in good form here. And we're going to take it at exactly, almost exactly the same spot. And I can swoosh and round. And I think, I can get through, I can get through, I can get through. I can't get through. Smack. And that's like, how many times have you seen that happen in Formula 1? And the guy says... I was holding the racing line, it's not my fault, he shouldn't have come in, he should have checked his mirrors. I don't know, you hear that one a lot, you hear it every year almost in fact, so there we go. I think I'll just beat a hasty retreat, um, go and check if the guy's okay, there's no guy, fine, get back in the car and bugger off. Okay guys, that's it for another week, I um, hope you enjoyed this one, we're definitely going to move this forward and um, try and speed the cars up and make them more... Uh, technically, technically, both the human one and the AI one because um, they can both do with a lot of improvements and the track. Okay, see ya. Bye.